Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me for the penultimate um, episode of our Holy Week series. We are up to Saturday, Holy Saturday, according to Roman Catholics, the day of the Easter Vigil, and we're all waiting for the resurrection. When I was uh, much younger and studying Catholicism, um, I remember it being said that no Mass is celebrated on Saturday, on Holy Saturday. I'm assuming that that continues today, though I don't know for sure. Very little is said in the Gospel of Mark uh, about anything happening on Saturday. Um, we know that Joseph of Arimathea was granted permission to take Jesus' body on Friday because it was uh, the, the beginning of the Sabbath. And it was laid in a tomb uh, that Joseph had nearby where he died. And so um, as the person who wrote the uh, synopsis that you're, you may be receiving, wrote in it. So in reality, we have no first-hand knowledge of what occurred until Jesus appeared on Easter Sunday. There are a lot of questions. I mean, I remember reading, oh, I think I was in junior high, and uh, I don't remember the author, but there was an interesting book about the, called The Passover Plot. A uh, lot of legends, a lot of speculations, a lot of what-if kinds of scenarios. What if he really hadn't been killed? What if he had been... Um, healed, taken away to the Essene community? What if he had uh, doctors who had come from his earlier visits to uh, the, the library in Alexandria and had brought all of this esoteric medicine with them? I mean, all kinds of crazy, crazy things. Uh, I shouldn't say they're crazy. Maybe they're, maybe they're true. Maybe they're accurate. I'm not here to comment on them is what I mean to say. However, um, in their book, the last week, uh, Borg and Crossan, they, they really look at how this was divine intervention in some way. Um, I can relate to that. I have felt, uh, not often, not frequently, but once or twice in my life, that there was a divine intervention, that something that should not have happened did, and, or something that should have happened didn't. I feel that there was divine intervention. Um, they go back and they quote, uh, or they bring up examples from the book of Daniel, for instance. Um, uh, they talk about um, other people being vindicated. I mean, it's, it's a good read in this uh, Bork and Crossan book. But what we really know, I think, to quote them and to quote the writer of this uh, synopsis, uh, is where they say this. It was not, as it might have been imagined, an instantaneous flash of divine light, but an interactive process between divinity and humanity, a joint operation between God and ourselves. Jesus does not travel alone. Think about that. He's always, right? Uh, Christianity is not really a solitary practice religion. We, it is designed for us to be in community with each other. Jesus does not travel alone, but always, always with those companions who represent us all. All those disciples, they represent us. The named ones who fail him and the unnamed ones who do not. I think that's a glorious way for us to think about this time. It's almost like we're given this gift. I always feel like Good Friday is sort of the inhalation. It's like, what's going to happen next? And we hold our breath through Saturday, and then with the resurrection on Sunday comes whew, the exhale. So Saturday of Holy Week is um, a time for us, I think, can be a time for us, to think about um, the KOG, the kingdom or kingdom of God, the relational uh, reality is what the kingdom of God is, the relational reality that we are a part of that is offered to us by Jesus, through Jesus, by the Spirit, through the Spirit, by God, through the God, through God, um, so that it binds us together in this network, if you will, of 
energy and love and support. Um, it's that Jesus taught us that that has already begun. I can only think of what the disciples were experiencing on that day in between. Tremendous loss, sorrow, grieving, horror for what they saw happen. Fear, fear of being arrested, having the same thing happen to them. Bonded together, I'm sure, through the crisis. Uh, uncertainty, confusion, chaos. Did they even dare to go out in public? And here, no doubt, some of them are remembering Jesus saying that, you know, I am here to bring, to usher in this kingdom or kingdom of God. I am here. The son of humanity has already arrived. All of this has already been starting and hang in there because in three days I'll be back. They didn't remember that. We know that from the, the Easter accounts. Most of them had forgotten his promise to return. They're so caught up in their emotions. So I guess my question for us today is, what are we so caught up in that we forget that too? Our fears, our anxieties, um, our dread, our grieving, our sorrows. And tomorrow is a day of laughter and sunshine and new possibilities. But first we have to live through this time. We cannot rush ahead. It's the Sisters of St. Joseph Maxim again, do not go ahead of grace with an imprudent eagerness, but quietly await its unfolding before you. We cannot just jump to that. The world around us is not jumping ahead. Well, some are. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Some are going way too fast ahead, and look at what's happening. They're they're not abiding by the, uh, the COVID safety rules. They're just out there because they've had it with being contained and they just want to be out and partying and socializing. And then, you know, there's another super spreader event. That's what happens when you get ahead of grace. And we mustn't do that with our own lives either. We have to just let God let things unfold. It has been really hard for me to wait for some news to know what, where the heck God was sending me. What was God supposed to be doing with me? I mean, what started for me as a two-month placement with downtown church is now becoming uh, a longer-term outlook, where I am now the bridge pastor there until they get an interim, and I believe may continue with the interim and perhaps beyond. I don't know what God has planned, but I just had to wait. We all have had to wait for that to unfold. We all have had to wait at South Church to see where the next steps were going to be. It was seven years ago. Uh, I may mention this tomorrow, but it was seven years ago on Easter Sunday that South voted to sell its church. And just look at all that has happened between then and now. Um, Another church, New Life, decided to join us and follow the same path, selling your church and then becoming part of South and the Acts of Faith and figuring out how to exist as a 100% missional church. We didn't know and we wanted to rush ahead and we couldn't. Today is the day when we can't rush ahead. We have to be focused and really use this time to think back over our lives and how communally we were brought through the transitions, because that's really what this is. Friday to Sunday, Good Friday to Easter Sunday, this is the transition process in, a, in miniature. I think that's more than enough for us to think about today. Thank you for joining me for this prayerful pause with the pastor. There will be another special edition tomorrow for Easter Sunday. Thanks, everybody. God bless.
Bye for now.